Good afternoon. This is Michael Masserang here again. Uh, today I'm with Chris Merman uh, at Piedmont Foundation Repair and the installation team. Uh, we're down in Pineville, North Carolina, and this is kind of a unique opportunity for us. We were hired by a local homeowners association working with a local engineering firm to explore some work that was installed by other companies and certainly what we found is very interesting uh, these uh, as you'll see here on these two open holes this is what we call a foundation underpinning unit where when a house has stabilization problems or a building these underpinning units can be installed to shore up or to support the load the applied load of the home transfer the load of the home down to the soil beyond this is a big business here in the charlotte market a lot of uh, properties deal with foundation settlement these uh these piers were installed approximately 15 years ago is that right chris That's right yes okay and it does require you know it takes 10 years to be a really a competent and qualified foundation repair specialist you know we've been in the business for 30 years and this is a really good opportunity to share with the public really the poor quality that a lot of these installation teams have in the field a lot of that is due to franchising uh poor training and just lack of qualified personnel uh the turnover rate's quite high it's hard work not a lot of people want to do it so to do it correctly requires a lot of things to happen in the right sequence of events and what we found here on this installation was basically incompetence laziness and just poor quality um chris tell us exactly what happened here and why this installation or why this bracketry and uh and the you know the underpinning piers themselves are a problem here well a couple of problems here is the building had experienced some settlement and they reached out to a um, foundation repair company about 15 years ago to have this work installed. And it was supposed to be engineered but or, or monitored by an engineer, which it wasn't. But looking at this bracket, a couple of issues that stand out already. Number one, it's ungalvanized metal, which is already pitted and rusting away. This, will not, this probably won't last another 15 years. The other problem is, since this is a micropile installation, it was improper because right here is the steel tendon that goes down and it's such a slender piece of metal that it's insufficient to resist the buckling or the eccentric loading of the bracket. And if you can kind of see that the bracket is already rotated at a negative angle and the bracket is actually bending, or the, 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 the steel rod is actually bending without even holding the weight. It's barely holding 4,000 pounds. I know that because I performed a load test on it. The other problem, and this happens a lot, is right here in the bracket, it's just dirt in there. They never put cement in there, hand packed the bracket. And what that is, is just you have a, um, an improper loading between the, the, the concrete footing and the steel bracket. So that's, typical of what we found on the, this building right here the other problem is is improper footing preparation the projection on this footing is too far given the thickness of the footing this footer should have been chipped back you know to at least about an inch maybe less so the bracket should be hugging up right underneath yes. the block to, to take the full blunt of the applied load of, of the wall yeah. yes yes Absolutely. What about the installation angle on the pier? It's, it's horrible. It looks to me like it's backwards. It absolutely is. Yes, that's the negative angle that I'm referring to. And how many of these piers have the same flaws? All of them. Every single one. So we have this, this unit here. This bracket's even worse. Improper yep. footing preparation. And you can even see jiggles. It's holding no weight. And these, uh, these homeowners are showing additional distress because these piers have failed and the engineers have now also witnessed this and have documented this for the job, is that correct? That is correct. Also, the engineering from 15 years ago shows a pile installed in this corner. There's nothing. Yeah. And actually they didn't even catch the fact that this little projection has no footing. That's just a cinder block on the dirt, again. Mm -hmm. A lot of issues that were missed and, and installed incorrectly 
that led to a poor outcome or poor performance of the work. Now the HOA is going to have the same homeowners are going to have to spend the money all over again. And there's no way that these piers can be repaired or rescued. No. It's we we got to go with new stuff, don't we? Absolutely, installed correctly. Yes. Okay. How about these units over here on the corner? We're going to move uh, to the corner of the building and. Uh, we have more of the same here. You can see where this this is crooked. I mean, you don't have to be a specialist to see here. How can that? You, you, again, they didn't chip the footing very well, and the T pipe is credit. Cro uh, it's crooked. So how, uh, it does. It, it, there's no. It, it doesn't work. I mean, it's it's crooked. They, like I said, they didn't chip the footing, and everything about this is incorrect. And we did load test this. It was barely holding four thousand pounds. When it should be holding 20. 20,000, yeah. Uh, same thing with, look at this pier. This pier, the installation angle is backwards. Look, look at it from this direction. You can actually see, you can actually see the negative angle, but this pile is a helical pier. This was not a micro pile. Different company did this one? Yes, yeah. Two different companies. As you can see, the pile was installed about this point, which is way too far from the footing. It was installed too far out and then shoved forward to the footing. Which caused the bracket to roll when they loaded it. Yes. I did a load test on these. Both of these on this chimney, they were holding about 12,000 pounds. But every time the load increased, the bracket just peeled and or rotated even further. The shaft is buckling. And this is also what you have. A lot of companies are installing this. This is their shaft material. We found this waste in the excavation. You can't put a high compressive load on such a slender shaft and the shaft just bends and buckles before it ever reaches capacity. So would you say, you know, this is typical of a lot of the installations going on in the city even today? Absolutely, without doubt. I, I, I hear about it and witness it and find things like this all the time. This is absolutely what goes on. Insufficient, people are being pushed just to just to put the, the crews for that is they may even mean well or they're just under the gun to perform and it is what it is the people in the office are putting pressure on them to get done quickly without following proper procedures absolutely yeah or training a high turnover how many companies are represented in this complex and it looks like we'll be ripping every single one of their peers out absolutely there's about there are three buildings that we're looking at now, and so far I've seen um, four different companies here. Four different companies. Uh, There's other buildings that are under work right now that are not ready to be videotaped, but we're already finding other companies work on other buildings that are behind us. And would you say that this HOA probably made a price decision to get these unqualified bidders into the project? And so basically they got what they paid for. They saved a little bit of money, but they now they're gonna have to do the job completely all over again because of improper installation and also it, you know was this the correct type of pier that was chosen to should they this, use this was definitely the, the type of pier here was School. definitely wrong but the micro piles are, are the are the best but but it was an improper installation this is square bar which is, is the cheapest stuff that you can get and it does have some deficiencies as far as, I mean, the, the extensions lag bolt together. It's better to have a two inch shaft that's threaded and tightened. Is it not that's a- Or, or, a, or a pipe shaft, yes. Or a pipe shaft. So, you know, this is older stuff, but you know, even back then the better stuff was available. So- um, This was know, put in about 25 years ago or better. 20, 25, okay. This, this work was, yes. Okay. So, you know, in essence, what, what we're trying to show the public, I mean, not every foundation repair company is the same as the next. No. And we have 30 years experience in this business. Uh, there aren't too many of us left around the city that do, still do this. And Chris has been in the field for a long time. He likes being in the field. Uh, and, you know, we, we take this seriously. We train our people properly. We're not, part, we're not a franchise. We don't have any intention of doing that. Uh, we're independent, so we want to provide our customers a quality product and so you don't have to deal with having to redo the whole project in 10 to 15 years. Never. Have you ever had a phone call for any of the work you've installed for any of the companies we've worked for, including working for ourselves now for almost 10 years? No. Have you ever had a callback? No. 
And this is no BS. I mean, we have four engineering firms that call us, give us referrals. We have a licensed engineering firm out here documenting this project with us that's gonna write up a repair plan and they will supervise the entire installation. And unfortunately, we're gonna have to give the, uh, give the HOA a proposal to redo the entire job. Possibly hundreds of thousands of dollars of wasted resources and money because a couple of people that sat on the, on the board and there's always a couple people that sit on these boards that will be want to make a price decision as opposed to a quality decision. So if you sit on an HOA board, make sure there's somebody that's on the board that has construction background, maybe an engineer, maybe a, a, perhaps a, constr a construction tradesperson that can look at the bids and identify when you're seeing a quality bid or a, 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 an actually an accurate bid and always involve the uh, engineering community to not only do a pre-construction analysis but to do project oversight and clearance once the once the project is completed uh, what other advice can you think Chris that would help the public to make a better decision than what we're seeing here which is really unfortunate and this goes on all over the city every single day doesn't it references and an engineer signing off on everything yeah there's your that's the best liability and ask questions have. about the installation team make sure that they can prove that they have at least 10 years of installation experience at the minimum make sure they can prove that ask to talk to the installer don't talk to the salesperson the salespeople are poorly trained and don't know what they're looking at talk to the installer don't talk to the people in the call center demand to speak to somebody that actually works in the field so that you can ask quality questions and discuss these issues that we're seeing today. If you have any questions about foundation underpinning, uh, the types of piers or anything that are used, engineering, uh, micro piles, helical piles, uh, anything of that nature, give us a call at the number at the bottom of your screen or visit our website uh, and then we'll refer you to the appropriate engineer uh, and come out to visit your home and do an analysis uh, uh, of your situation. So again, this is Michael Masser and we appreciate you uh, joining us today and we look forward to seeing you later. Thank you very much.